Hi, this is Ed. I hope you all are having a good day today. Today I have a very important message to share with you. You know, the the Lord has placed on my heart, especially the last several days, how many are grieving the Holy Spirit. You know, and basically we can grieve the Holy Spirit by just not obeying him when he if he tells us to do something and we don't do it. That is is grieving to him and also when we do not follow things that we're instructed to do in the holy scriptures that also grieves the spirit and uh you know we've all done that you know i know i i haven't listened to the holy spirit at all times i wish i could say i had but sadly i haven't and neither have you at all times if you're honest with yourself now uh there are a number of things that we can do to grieve the spirit and again you know it's mainly by just not listening to him and also by not doing the things we're instructed to do in the word but you know there, there's also other things as well and uh the the seriousness of it is though that if we continually go against the holy spirit if we continually do not obey his voice his his promptings in our lives then we can cause him to depart from us as he departed from King Saul. And we'll, we'll look at that briefly as, as well as some other scriptures here that talk about, you know, uh, being sure as much as possible that we do not grieve the Holy Spirit. It's a very serious matter. And uh, again, we are to obey the scriptures and to repent from all willful practice of sin so that we do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And some today, uh, so-called Christians, uh, I'm not so sure they ever had the Holy Spirit the way some of them act. And only God knows, but uh, certainly we can provoke the Holy Spirit to leave, as we will see. And uh, first I want to read... Uh, Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Verse 10. In order to not grieve the Holy Spirit, we must have a clean heart. Must, must be cleaned by the, the washing of the Word. The, God's Word cleanses us, and also the regeneration of the Holy Spirit working through us. That cleanses us and gives us a clean heart. And we also, again, not only must listen to His voice, but we must obey it. We must not only listen to what the Word instructs us to do, but we must obey it. And... Uh, However, we must cleanse ourselves also from all filthiness of the flesh, perfecting holiness in the fear of God, which 2 Corinthians 7, chapter 7, verse 1, that instructs us to do. Now, uh, verse 11, sin separates us from God in his presence. Uh, and David knew you know, that David wrote, wrote this psalm, Psalm 51, he knew that God's spirit had departed from Saul, and he was very afraid that the same thing could happen to him. And that's thus that that's why he prayed this prayer. And uh, he knew that the, the spirit, had, again, had departed from Saul, and it also could happen to him. Now, uh, we're going to take a look here uh, at 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, and, and then we're going to read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, talking about Saul and, and why the, the Spirit departed from him. Okay, 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. This is very serious here. Not only is rebellion like the sin of witchcraft, 
But it says also stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So th this is this is a very serious matter, and uh, rebellion to God's in God's eyes is is something that uh, should not be in the child of God. Even though we all do fall short at times, and like I said before, we we we're not going to listen to God and obey Him a hundred percent of the time as long as we're still in His flesh, because our our fleshly nature still has its its own will and desires. But we are to do our best to, to crucify that fleshly nature each and every day and to subdue it so that as little as possible we would go against God and what he's telling us to do. And for the most part, we should be following him, especially in matters of, of any willful sin. Um, and, and again, just as, as Saul was judged for this, we can be judged for this as well, if, if we provoke the Holy Spirit to withdraw. And uh, Saul also, he was a God's anointed king, yet God did not let his disobedience go unpunished. And again, we too will suffer consequences for disobedience, if it is, especially if it is not repented of. And uh, if we are persistent in our disobedience, Again, we can provoke the Holy Spirit to withdraw from us. Now I'm going to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So not only did God take the Holy Spirit from Saul, but he also says sent an evil spirit to trouble him. You know, when, when the Holy Spirit departs from us, it invites Satan to wreak havoc in our lives basically is what it does. You know, if the house is not the temple, we are the temple of God. And if our temple is not cleansed, if our temple is void of the Holy Spirit, then all sorts of evil spirits will come in and take place and take root inside of us. So that's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And some of you may not be filled with the Holy Spirit. You've never had this experience. You can just come before the Lord and ask him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and he will do so. For we truly cannot live a victorious Christian life unless we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit working within us. Now, um, that being said, God's Spirit again here departed from Saul, and it is not recorded again in the Scriptures of the Holy Spirit ever coming back to him. And uh, Saul did not appear to have remorse for, for his sins in, in which lead, led unto repentance. So uh, that, that's very serious. Now verse 12, it talks about our joy being restored. You know, the joy can be restored through a clean heart. And uh, some of you may not even know the Lord Jesus is your own personal Savior. If you do not, I invite you right now to ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you, to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and to help you be ready for heaven and to have an inheritance in his wonderful kingdom. Today is the day of salvation. And if this message has convicted some of you that you've been grieving the Holy Spirit, Take heed to this message, for the Lord is indeed merciful, but at some point his mercy will run out on those who do not choose to repent, who do not turn away from their sins, who persist in their wickedness. One day his wrath will be poured out upon the earth, especially during the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation which is soon to come upon all the world. You do not want to be here for that time. You do not have to be if you have a personal relationship with Jesus. He will keep you from, as it says in Revelation 3.10, He will keep you from the hour of trial, the time of Jacob's trouble. But you must be born again of the Spirit. Now I want to take a look at Ephesians uh, 
just read a couple of passages here in Ephesians. It talks about some things we can do, and there's a number of others. As I mentioned earlier, there's, there's a lot of things we can do to grieve the Spirit, but this just mentions a few. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 through 32, and then chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. We are instructed here to not grieve the Holy Spirit. And this is a New Testament scripture for those of you that, you know, say that, that the Old Testament is not relevant. And it's true, we don't have to follow all the laws of the Old Testament, but there are a number of scriptures that in the Old Testament that are clarified in the New Testament. And, and this, this is one of them, talking about grieving the Spirit. Uh, we grieve the Spirit. By fornication and idolatry, greed and uncleanness. And this uncleanness can cover many different things. Verse 5 says that those who do such things without repentance will not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, this is very serious. Verse 6, let no one deceive you with vain words, such as the false grace teachers that I talked about in my last video I did who say that God is a God of mercy only, and that he would never punish his children. Do not listen to those who teach such things. Because of disobedience, God's wrath comes upon his children. It says so in the scriptures we just read. And the word children here indicates that it is a believer in Christ. It's not an unbeliever that he's talking about here. And also here in verse 2, uh, it instructs us to walk in love. We must walk in love with one another as much as possible. We are to pursue peace and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. If we persecute other believers in Christ, then we grieve the Spirit. And if we do not forgive others, God will not forgive us. Unforgiveness surely can cause the Holy Spirit to depart from us. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live the Christian life as it is intended to be lived out. Jesus himself said that without him we can do nothing, but with him we can do all things. So I hope this message has been a blessing to you. hope it's brought conviction to some and called some unto repentance. So until next time, God bless you all, and keep looking up. Bye-bye.